Uh, for those who don't know, I tend to wake up at 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. in order to do what I need to do. And that was more prevalent when I was a teacher because the only time I could really work out was before I taught because afterwards I have to rush home and go edit my videos and things like that. So that was just a schedule that worked for me. But I remember probably about six years ago, um, because I used to work out at night, I was like, I'm going to try going to a 6 a.m. workout class. Like, let me just see if I can do it. So I think I woke up at 5.45. Um, I was nearly late to my 6 a.m. workout. And after that workout, I went to work and I thought, I am never doing that again. Like, I was so tired at work. And I was like, I don't know how people do this. I don't know how they're morning workout people. But the biggest difference is that you do have to sleep earlier in order to wake up earlier. So you can't expect to keep your, you know, midnight sleeping schedule and then wake up at 5 a.m. and think like, I'm going to be great. Um, We do have to sleep earlier. um, And I would say the first couple times you try, it's going to be hard and there's going to be a learning curve. Um, So I would say, you know, if you do wake up at 5 a.m. and you're so tired and you're going about your day, if you take a nap, it really affects your sleep schedule too. And so I don't take a nap. And so by the time it's like eight or nine o'clock, the minute my head hits the pillow, I just knock out because I'm so (laughs) exhausted. Um, And then I'm able to wake up early the next day. But I think what's so powerful about waking up at 5 a.m. was that now I feel like I could literally wake up at any time and I'm fine. And so... I was not a morning person um, before, and I would sleep in until like 9 or 10. Um, But waking up at 5, I realized, you know, if I have to take a really early flight in the morning and wake up at 3 a.m., like I can do that because I've proven to myself that I can do, you know, difficult things. And so it's really all about like proving to yourself and showing up for yourself of, hey, like you're someone who can do this because you've done this before. While if you wake up at 5 a.m. and then you turn off your alarm and go back to sleep, you've not proven to yourself that, you know, you are someone who snoozes and then you wake up at like 8 a.m. when you wanted to wake up at 5 (laughs) a.m. Yeah. I think that is such a crucial like mindset shift that like, and I want to point that out to our listeners. Like you have to prove to yourself that you can do it and you only prove it to yourself by, by doing it well, like by, by your wins. Right. Cause like the more you, like, if you try and you fail, you try, you fail, you're going to have less confidence that you can do it. And, and that's happened to me before. Like when I've tried to like wake up earlier and I keep like snoozing, like I, I think that is like detrimental to your mindset. So have you ever experienced that? And how do you like continue to either stay motivated to try it or prove to yourself that you can do it? Yeah. Um. So I only set, I'd say usually one alarm or two alarms at most. I don't have a whole list of alarms where I just like have the habit of turning it off because I already know when I wake up, like if I click snooze one more time, like that's it. Like if I go back to sleep, nothing's going to wake me up again. And so um, creating a system that works in your favor. And so for me, it's just setting two alarms where I know after the second one, like if you don't wake up, like that's on you because yeah. there's no other alarms. Cause I haven't like created um, a system where I think I'm going to need more than that. Um, another example is um, if you feel like you turn it off right away because it's right next to you, then putting your phone or your alarm clock like further away. So you have to like get up. And once you do get up, I like to turn on the lights because I have a hard time sleeping with lights on. So mm-hmm. that just is telling my body like, we're waking up now. We're not going back to sleep. Um, or like, and it's harder to sleep if you're not in your room. So it's like, okay, get up, go to the bathroom, go brush your teeth and do, you know, do things so that you're setting yourself up for success in that sense. But if you're like, I'm just going to crawl back into bed. Like we're not really creating an environment of success here because we're just going to go back to sleep. <laughs> right. Right. I, so basically for the things that are like, Because when you're like in that morning groggy mood, it is so easy to like do what's easy, but you set yourself up for success by like forcing yourself to do what's hard. Yeah, yeah. And I think like being mindful of of your future self of like, do you really know like how you would respond to these situations? Because many times we think like, I'm not going to go back to sleep. I'm just going to sit in my bed really quickly and it's going to be fine. But it's like, it's like, no, like, you know yourself, you know, when you get back in bed, you're going to fall asleep. So it's like, don't set yourself up for failure in that sense. So like go off into the living room or somewhere else where you're not going to fall asleep. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I love this conversation because I think it, it goes so deep because it's, it's building your relationship with yourself, like knowing yourself and doing something that is good for your future self. It, it's like choosing the, you know, doing what's hard, choosing the future versus like what's, what feels good now. 